With Shohei Otani unanimously winning the American League MVP award, other teams must be pondering making their own investments in overseas talent. There is a level of risk to offering Japanese and Korean baseball players lucrative contracts just because of the skill jump from the Nippon Professional Baseball League and Korean baseball organization to Major League Baseball. We've seen some successful contracts for Japanese players in recent times, like Shohei Otani, Kenta Maeda, and Masahiro Tanaka. However, it's been quite a while since we've seen a position player pan out in the same way. With guys like Yoshi Tsutsugo from Japan and Jung Ho Gong and Hasong Kim from Korea all struggling to find their footing at the big league level. But the newest posting from the NPB may be the league's best bet in quite a long time. His name is Seiya Suzuki. He's instantly established himself as one of the top free agents on the market with about a dozen teams rumored to have serious interest in his services. His posting will initiate a 30-day signing period, meaning that MLB teams would normally have roughly a month to come to an agreement on a contract before Suzuki is relegated back to the MPB. However, this isn't a normal posting situation. With the collective bargaining agreement, aka the CBA, expiring on December 1st, and Suzuki not being posted until November 23rd earliest, teams will probably have one week to figure out a deal for him. And if no team signs him in this extremely small window, the remainder of his signing period will have to take place after the lockout ends, and who knows when that will be. There have been failures to sign a posted player as recently as last year, with Tamayuki Sagano not finding a suitable offer during his period. But there's something about Suzuki that tells me this might not be an issue for him, even if it is only one week. Some quotes have regarded Suzuki as the best power hitter to go across the Pacific since Hideki Matsui, so I don't think teams will be trying to cheapen up when discussing deals with his people. But enough talk about the system and the history of postings, let's get into what makes Seiya Suzuki special enough to warrant this discussion in the first place. First, a history of Suzuki's play in the NPB, and then how well certain skills can translate to the major league environment. Suzuki actually struggled quite a bit when first making it to the NPB out of high school. In his first two seasons in 2013 and 2014, he played first base, third base, shortstop, left field, center field, and right field all at least 20 games apiece over the two years. Trying to establish yourself as a reliable player while also attempting to find a position you're most comfortable in is very difficult. I think Suzuki was also having trouble because he was the staff ace of his high school team and fully believed he would enter the league as a pitcher in some capacity. However, he was a part of the same draft class as Shohei Otani and Tamayuki Sagano, among others, causing him to fall to the second round. His introductory years to the league weren't pretty as Suzuki struggled to find footing in the MPB as an 18-year-old through his age 26 season. He played in 289 games with just 12 home runs, a respectable 281 batting average, but a low OPS, and part of that was because his strikeout rate was double his walk rate. But I believe his early struggles link back to a few reasons, like getting acclimated in the league, swapping between the NPB and Nigun, that's the NPB's minor league equivalent, and also shifting between six different positions, and also not being able to pitch anymore. This likely all caused his offensive numbers to be subpar early in his career. 2016 didn't get off to an encouraging start either, with Suzuki immediately pulling his hamstring in the first month of the season. People were beginning to grow worried about the young player, but Suzuki, as well as his perennially losing team to that point in the Hiroshima Carp, would completely turn a new leaf in 2016. For reference, from 2002 to 2015, Hiroshima registered one winning season and zero playoff berths, never placing above third place. But out of nowhere in 2016, they'd go 89-52 and to claim their only first place finish to that point of the 21st century, losing in the Japan Series, which is the World Series over in the NPB. Assisting their pursuits greatly was Seiya Suzuki in his first breakout season. Suzuki also claimed his first gold glove, with the positional shifting woes of his past fully behind him. He also took home his first Best Nine award, equivalent to that of an all-MLB team selection. 2016 began an impressive stretch of Suzuki's career, hitting at least 25 home runs and managing a 935 OPS or higher in every season through 2021. That's a six-year window right there. Suzuki's new power stroke slid him into the cleanup spot for the 2017 season, where his numbers continued to improve for the carp. In 2016 and 2017 combined, Suzuki had over a thousand plate appearances with 55 home runs, 33 stolen bases, a very respectable 315 batting average, and a very eye-opening 966 OPS. His walk rate was up to 11%, 4% higher from his first three years combined, and he began to strike out less and less, going down to 15.3%. He posted these impressive numbers 
Spurs despite missing the last 20 or so games of the 2017 season with a fracture in his right tibia. The Carp won the division for the second consecutive year, but without their star slugger, they were bounced in the second round. Suzuki once again took home a gold glove and best nine award in back-to-back -back seasons. These were really encouraging seasons for Suzuki, but no one could have predicted him taking a step even further in 2018, as he established himself as one of the biggest threats in the league. Despite his ankle fully healing for the 2018 season, Suzuki again hit the injured list for lower back stiffness early on in the season. People began to ponder if Suzuki was injury prone to an extent, but he quelled those rumors by playing in 125 games that year and once again helping the Carp reach the playoffs. 2018 kicked off a four season stretch without any injuries and doubts hampering his play. This year through 2021 netted him a handful of awards and for good reason. A three time All Star, a home run derby champion, a batting and on base title in 2019, two more Best Nine awards, and another gold glove. Hiroshima did return to mediocrity as a team, but Suzuki continued to rise as a face of Japanese baseball. In this four year stretch with over 2,000 plate appearances, he once again batted above 300 at 319 with 122 home runs, 44 stolen bases, and an average OPS of 1.03 over four years. His walk rate went up 5% to 16.1, pretty much on par with his strikeout percentage at 16.4. Every aspect of his offensive game was refined to perfection at this point. And according to Delta Graphs, a Japanese sabermetric site dedicated to the NPB, Suzuki was easily the most valuable position player in Japan in 2021, totaling 8.7 wins above replacement, 1.7 war above second place. Okay, so I didn't want to spend too much time on his NPB stats because they obviously won't all translate 100% if he does come to MLB next season, albeit they are pretty mind boggling. But I think they're important to highlight for a few reasons. Let's look at the big takeaways here. Looking at his 2019 season, Seiya Suzuki drew a staggering 103 walks, and I believe this is a significant part of his game that will transfer easily to MLB, his plate discipline. He drew more walks than strikeouts in two of his last three seasons, an incredibly hard feat regardless of where you play. And this is because Suzuki doesn't swing at pitches out of the zone often, with his 19.8 out of zone swing percentage being incredibly respectable. Had he done this in MLB last season, it would have ranked him fifth in the league, joining Tommy Pham, Robbie Grossman, Max Muncy, and Juan Soto as the only big leaguers to fall under 20% for their out of zone swing percentage. That's elite company. Suzuki's age is also a factor in his favor, as many of the NPB and KBO players to transfer overseas to MLB were already in their 30s. Suzuki will be just 27 years old next season. This means he's still a lock to hold down a corner outfield position, maybe even center field, and do it well. From 2017 to 2021, Suzuki nailed an impressively high 45 outfield assists in a five season stretch, in addition to winning three gold gloves in his time in Japan. Suzuki has also learned to put the ball in the air with high frequency. In 2021, he registered a 57.1 fly ball percentage, over half of his batted balls. Had he somehow put up that number in MLB last season, it would have been the best of any hitter in the game, far exceeding Austin Meadows' 53.0% which topped MLB. And while this isn't really a stat you can measure, Suzuki has played on some of the biggest stages Japan has to offer. He appeared two times in the Japan series and has frequently been a part of the Japanese national team. He was also in the 2017 World Baseball Classic and even helped Japan capture the gold medal at this summer's Tokyo Games. He's by no means afraid of a big audience. Tom Musa, an MVP writer for Prospects Live, did a fantastic deep dive into the aspects of Seiya Suzuki's game. He decided to compare Suzuki's NBP numbers to that of Yoshi Sutsugo and Shogo Akiyama, both of whom have struggled since their transition to MLP. For this, we'll need to go back to the 2019 season to compare all three. Now, when we look at their stats, Suzuki obviously has the best batting average, on base clip, and slugging clip, as well as the highest weighted runs created plus. But all of these stat lines are pretty good. So Suzuki breaking far away from them isn't that alarming. They're obviously all tight in terms of offensive output, but the key difference here once again goes back to plate discipline, a talent I believe is the most transferable between leagues. Suzuki's out of zone swing percentage is far below Sitsugo and Akiyama, while his contact rating is the same as Akiyama, and his swinging strike percentage is well below both of them. Sitsugo and Akiyama have had big strikeout problems ever since they've come to MLB, but this may not be an issue for Seiya Suzuki if he can maintain his 
approach. While I don't know if Suzuki will put up all-star caliber play if he does end up coming to MLB, what I do know is that he will continue to have a patient, seasoned approach to every at-bat, which will likely result in great on-base numbers. This adds on to his already present power and launch angle, as well as his plus arm in the outfield. So what's not to like? Here's another thing. Fangraphs currently projects that Seiya Suzuki will get a four-year, $40 million contract. That's pretty affordable for a corner outfielder going into his age 27 season. I think the years are accurate, but maybe he gets a fifth since he's young. However, with how hot the market has been ahead of a potential lockout, Suzuki could possibly see numbers in the $50 million or even $60 million range, because there are plenty of teams in tight contention windows with fat wallets. As for where he goes, I think any number of teams would benefit from having Suzuki on their roster. The Mets, Giants, and Brewers in the NL, and the Red Sox, Rangers, and Mariners in the AL are my picks for his likely landing spots. Picking six is kind of cheating, but this is my video, so whatever. I have no idea what the future holds for Seiya Suzuki, but if I'm an MLB general manager, I think I'm willing to take a low-cost bet on this Japanese phenom. Maybe that's just me, but something about Seiya Suzuki just excites me. Hey everyone, thanks for watching today's video. It was sponsored by Elgato and their upcoming Black Friday sale. If you're looking to get into the content game, they have some awesome tech and great tools for you to use and they're on sale. I can't really show you guys right now because I'm using it, but I use their Elgato face cam pretty much every time I have to appear on camera. It makes you look amazing, obviously. I mean, come on guys, let's be real. And it also comes with great camera hub software to adjust the settings as you prefer. I use this as well as their ring light to make sure I'm glowed up to the best ability. So whether it's videos, streaming, or podcasts, Podcast, I really think Elgato might be your best bet. It's going to be 30% off all their products on their website, which is listed in the description below. And the sale goes live from November 25th to November 29th. So mark your calendars and upgrade your setup with Elgato. Thanks for watching today's video.